John Cohen is the athletic director at Auburn. Uh, two years now? Am I right about that? I think that? 16 months. 16 months, okay. Uh, I didn't know if we had gotten to the two-year mark. We're, so we're still you, doing, like, the, the baby thing, right? That's right. It's not a that's year right. and a half. It's 16 <laughs> months, right? Yes. So, yeah, so a year and a half, 16 months, however you want to say it. Welcome in. We appreciate you coming on with us. Thank you. Um, th- it, is, it is an interesting time in college athletics. I know there's a lot of things we've got to get to, but probably the things you were juggling when you first became an athletic director are totally different than things you're juggling now. Yeah, you know, I, I think when you become an athletic director, especially in the Southeastern Conference, one of your main focuses are, are facilities. And, you know, with name, image, and likeness and the, and the current climate of intercollegiate athletics, things have really changed. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're staring at um, a, a different way of thinking, a different way of doing things. I'm not saying that it's bad. Uh, it's just different. And, you know, I, I several of my colleagues, even around the state of Alabama and around the SEC, have said there there is not not an endless supply. Right. So we we got to make some really difficult decisions, and I think what we're all searching for at this point in time is this. I felt like eight years ago when I became an athletic director, there was a standard for everything we did. There was a standard, um, whether it was NCAA rules, whether it was financial, there was always a standard. I, I think we're searching for one right now. Uh, because there, there really is a lack of standards, uh, stand, uh, when you, albeit rules, um, philosophies, things of that nature. And I, I'm, I'm going to be really excited when we, when we can get back to that level. Well, you said there's not an endless or there is an endless supply of money. As an athletics director, you know, collectives are, are trying to figure out their way on this. But how much do you weigh in on how much a player is worth? Zero. Okay. <laughs> uh, John Cohen weighs in zero on that. Um, we leave that to others. Uh, but John Cohen certainly is involved in connecting athletes with opportunities uh, w- w- well within the rules. And we also speak to our alumni a great deal ab- about the great work that On to Victory is doing, um, our collective. And I, I hate even saying collective because – this is a group of people that really care about our student athletes and and want to help them find their way. And I, I think there is definitely a place for that. I think it's a positive thing, but it's going to be a much more positive thing when we have standards. Yeah, I, I know Jordan Hare Stadium. You've got uh, some changes going there, and and the people that love Auburn help with those donations as well. What are some things you're excited about about changing the game day football experience for your fans coming up? Well, certainly we experimented with field suites a year ago. Right. It was a huge success, so now we're going to dive into that. Um, we're also diving into some opportunities that we have, some some old cavernous uh, spaces underneath the stadium, and 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 really looking at. Uh, in every direction at our north end zone. Um, if you look at Auburn right now, the amount of premium seating we have in our football stadium compared to eight, the 88,000 it, it capacity it has, it's a relatively low amount. And our premium sections are excellent. They're sold out. Um, we, we Right now we have 63 different people who are in a waiting line for suites. So – there is a demand for premium here at Auburn, and we're in the very, very beginning stages with our board, with our president, with the people who, who run this great university, um, and looking into what we can do in Jordan-Hare to, to help with the, the, the lack of premium. Well, that ruins my idea. I was going to tell you, be the first school to put 85 suites in the north end zone, and every football scholarship player's family gets one of the yeah. suites. Can, if you, yeah, that if would you work got out six, real well, If, if you've got 63 on a waiting list, there's yeah. not enough room can for that. Can you explain to him why that is a bad idea? <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's a bad idea because I don't know how you get the whatever it is. The, the, if the, it would even get cost, Cam Newton it would be huge. Back. It would be tall. <laughs> We'd block the sun. <laughs> I, I think the players would be, our student athletes would uh, would be in favor of that for sure. Yeah. Uh, John Cohen is the Auburn athletic director. He is with us uh, on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline as we continue uh, from Auburn. Um, I know you get asked this a lot, but Auburn fans want us to ask you the the uh, about the apparel deal. Um, where does that stand with with Under Armour and per- perhaps a change if that is in the offing? Can you talk about where that stands? Is well, Russell coming back? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was a big fan of Russell in the day. I know you guys were too. Yeah. Oh yeah, right? it's an Alabama Alabama company. Yeah. That's yeah. right, yeah. Alex City. And yeah, I remember as a kid, everybody would go buy the store where you know they they sold right yeah. there in Alex City. But yeah, I, I, we've been after this since September the first contractually, and we feel like we're in a very very positive place right now. 
I, I, I think our fan base, everyone connected with Auburn is going to be very, very pleased with where we are. Just not ready to, to release because not not all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. God, everybody says that way too much. I, right? I, I, but yeah, it's, yeah. It's like was, I get it. But, uh, yeah, we're excited about where we are and excited about the future in that area. And, and we feel like, uh, again, our student athletes all the way to our, our fans and alumni are really going to enjoy it. Is this. that one of the most asked questions you get? Though? Yes. Yeah. A yeah. lot. So you knew and, that was coming. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, rightfully so, especially from student athletes, because, you know, the, those shoes you put on, they're not just – a uniform. Right. I mean, they're part of the anatomy, right? Yeah. And and uh, we got a lot of input from student athletes. We got a lot of input from fans. We got a lot of input from our coaches, from staff members, and everyone ac- across all the stakeholders of Auburn University. And and we listened. And and to me, I'm 57 years old, guys. Listening is a much more valuable tool now than it was 20 years ago. When I was 37, there's no need for me to listen to anyone because I knew everything, right? <laughs> right. At age 57, you know, realize that listening is a very valuable tool. You played for a legendary coach in Ron Polk, baseball at Mississippi State, and now you're around a couple of guys you got a really good business relationship with in Bruce Pearl and Hugh Freeze. Um, what do you see in these guys that maybe you saw in a guy like Ron Polk? Yeah, just leaders, people who care about young people, um, people who care about this university, um, never too busy to, to help anyone. Um, the selfless characteristics of those guys, and, it, and it's not just those two. Um, I, I think you can throw Butch Thompson into that mix as well. I think you can throw a ton of our – I think you can throw Johnny Harris, our, our women's basketball coach, into that. I, I just feel so privileged to work with uh, a group of coaches – uh, Mickey Dean walked into my office uh, a week ago and said, here's what I think is best for Auburn softball. And it was one of the most selfless things I had ever heard any coach say. So I, I feel so privileged to be with this group of coaches at, at a place like Auburn. I, I remember he mentioned Ron Polk, and it just always makes me think of this. It's the most random thing, John. But um, he was still the baseball coach, obviously, at Mississippi State when the SEC tournament was at the Met. Or he still is, obviously. But I started going and watching him, and I just always loved watching him uh, hit infield. And he'd have that fungo bat, and as soon as he finished hitting, he would flip the fungo bat, reach in his back pocket, pull out that gold watch, and put it back on. Yeah. Every single time he did it, it was just like that was his reflex. You know, he he's an amazing guy, and you talk about a standard. I was mentioning standard early. He he really set the standard early on for what a college baseball coach should be. A guy uh, won more games than any person in any sport in SEC history. You're talking about 1,100-plus wins and, and just a man of dignity, of class, and really learned so much from him as a student athlete. When I went there, I, I couldn't have been more immature or selfish. Um, and he, he's somebody that really forced you to grow up, but in a very positive way. And I just – I feel incredibly – privileged you know when you get a little older you start saying what if yeah right. i don't end up at mississippi state with ron polk what would have happened you know and i just I, I, somehow the stars aligned and i just got to live this this charmed life what do you miss most about baseball you know i, I miss the preparation um that's what i love about what we do now um our staff spent about an hour and a half two hours preparing for um something that we're going to introduce um, later on to a, a group of stakeholders at Auburn and that preparation. And we're saying, okay, what if this question is asked? How do, how do we handle this? What if this question is asked? Do we have this a handle on this? Do we have... And really that's the coaching background is it's kind of a series of if-then statements for those who, who have coded before. If this happens, then this is going to happen. That's really what coaching is. And it's, it's, it's an, uh, not an easy transition, but certainly that does transition from the coaching side to the administrative side. You, uh, we were talking about baseball movies and bad baseball movies, and this one falls in the latter category, Summer Catch. Outside of Jessica Bill jumping in a pool, nothing good about it. But it was in the Cape <laughs> Cod League. You played in the Cape Cod League, and that is the most infamous wood bat league out there. Um, who are some of the guys you played against, and what do you remember the most about it? Oh, wow. I think Mo Vaughn. You remember Mo Vaughn? Oh, wow. there, yeah. There's a bunch of big leaguers, and, of course, none of them are going to come to mind right now. But I, I think the year that I was in the Cape Cod League, I well, was You were living with the host family, right? I was with the, the Soro family. I remember those guys very well. It was just a thrill. You're playing in a league with 10 teams, and your forest road trip is about 30 miles. I played in Hyannis, and it's just an incredible opportunity. Um, I, I did figure out, though, when we went to the beach, what water's edge meant. 
Not not like the Gulf here where you have full-on beaches. The water's edge means your feet better be in the water if you're walking on the beach because if not, you're standing on somebody's property. But <laughs> um, just, just yeah, and I, I will tell you guys this story too. I, I, playing for Hyannis, the town I was actually in was called, was spelled B-A-R-N, barn, S-T-A-B-L-E, barn stable. Right. Except – those in Massachusetts would call it Bonstable. Oh, wow. Bonstable. <laughs> Bonstable. So, I, the, you know, the guy kept asking me, hey, hey, give me your address. And I'd say, you know, blah, 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 Barnstable. And the guy just looked at me like, I have no idea what you're saying. I said, no, 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 <laughs> Barnstable. Yes. And he'd go, oh, oh, Bonstable. <laughs> so this kid who grew up in Alabama is really having to learn, you know, Massachusetts, right? Yeah. So there was a lot of fun. Just a hey, great speaking summer. of growing up, you grew up in Tuscaloosa, did you I know? Did. You and your wife. I did. Um so that makes it interesting. Yeah, you know, it does. Sure. It does. I, in fact, a month from now, I'm going to be speaking at my high school's graduation, and I can't imagine being surrounded by more Alabama people than in that environment. But, yeah, my father was a law professor at the University of Alabama for almost 40 years. My mother was a public school teacher in Tuscaloosa. My sister, Nettie, went to Alabama Law School. Um, I, I think Nell and I, between the two of us, we have 12 Alabama graduates in our family. Neither one of us went to Alabama. But there is a ton – of uh, orange and blue in Tuscaloosa, thanks to the Coets now, because we've converted a, a bunch. And it's exciting for us. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm interested in uh, your decision when you came to Auburn. Was that a tough decision for you? It, it was a tough decision only because uh, of, you know, I, Mississippi State will always be part of who I am. You know, um, the, the, it, it really, as a student athlete there, as a coach there, as an athletic director there, it's just a wonderful place. It's a place that gave me incredible opportunities. But when, when Auburn became an opportunity for me, I, I have always looked at Auburn um, in, in this way with reverence to say, man, I, I mean, if you look at every sport at Auburn, there's been a period of time in which Auburn has been the best in the country at that sport. It doesn't matter whether it's equestrian or softball, you know, playing for national championships in softball, played for national championships three different times in women's basketball, obviously with what Bruce has done here. Baseball has been to the College World Series two of the last four years. Um, it just goes on and on. Swimming and diving has national championships. Track and field has national championships. I mean, you're talking about 24 national championships in this place. And at the, t- the sports that haven't won a national championship have been really close. And just what an incredible opportunity uh, for me to come back to my home state. Is, is there a reason Mississippi State produces athletic directors? <laughs> I mean, but seriously, we, because Scott Strickland, yeah, yeah. Uh, Greg Byrne, yeah. and yourself, yeah. I mean, all in the conference, all started at Mississippi State. Well, you know, Zach Selman's the athletic director now yep. at Mississippi State and doing a great job. And I, I, I've told Zach this many times, he's got to get a degree from Mississippi State because if he does <laughs> – there will be four athletic directors in the SEC yeah. have a degree from Mississippi. Isn't State. that wild, though? Yeah, you're you're right. But uh, again, a lot of pride there, and you know, Mississippi State is led by one of the great presidents uh, in, in the entire country, and uh, it, it's just it, it really was a great place for me and to raise my family. But this opportunity at Auburn yeah. was strong, and and they're just. Um, Auburn is really one of those special special places in college athletics. When uh, the SEC meetings happen in Destin and the Texas AD is there, will you guys discuss horns down and how it will not be officiated the same way in the (laughs) SEC as it is in the Big 12? Well, Chris is a good friend and he's an excellent (laughs) AD. And, you know, obviously the resources that the University of Texas and, quite frankly, Oklahoma bring to the league, it really just expands the great brand of this 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 great conference. And, you know, when when you start looking at it geographically and seeing how – these leagues span across the country, and you, you look at our league geographically, it just makes so much sense. We're still one of those leagues that's not, I'm not just going to say it, not only superior in athletics with incredible ac- academic opportunities among the 16 league schools, but, but also still condensed into a geographic area that makes sense for our student-athletes, for travel, and for our fans. It's a drivable league, yes. and that, that is what has set it apart from the Pac-12 and the Big Ten. And the ACC is still – now it's it's getting less drivable. Norman to Columbia, South Carolina is not an easy trip, but it's still, in theory, doable. You're still in the eastern half of the United States. That, that right? is true, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. You don't have to change – you only change one time zone. But, I mean, that, that has been the difficulty with some of those other conferences. It's what I've always liked about the SEC is it seems like the map matters. It, it does, and, and especially for our fans. Yeah. You know, it, at one point, 
you know, the rivalries in the SEC didn't exist. They had to start at one point in time. And I think with Texas and Oklahoma, that we're going to look at this or, you know, we won't be around, but 100 years from now, people will act like that. those rivalries with Texas and Oklahoma and the rest of our league existed forever. Yeah, It has to start somewhere. It's going to start next year, and I think it's one of the – the most exciting things that's happened to our league in a long time. Well, back to Horns Down. Please tell Chris <laughs> it's not the worst thing he's going to see on the road in the SEC, <laughs> yeah. especially if he goes to Baton Rouge on a Saturday night. No, there will be some environments. Yes. Uh, and that's that's some, uh, that, uh, This league and the environments uh, everywhere are, are just incredible, and it's so much fun to be around. The spirit, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say it just means more because I think that's that's been said a lot, but I will say this, it's just different. Um, it's what makes it a great TV product. The, cr- the home crowds everywhere you go in the league, it's so it's so interesting. This morning, I, I was just listening to an interview of somebody who was in the SEC who transferred out of our league and went out west, and he described vividly how much more it means. You can just feel it. It's palpable in this league, and, and that's why you want to be a part of it. If you're a student athlete, you want to compete against the best, and I don't think there's any doubt that, that – that this league brings out the best. What do you remember about your first meeting with Mike Leach? <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> you know. He was just such I mean, because he was always. We loved him. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he would come on whenever. And he yeah. was just a great guy. And, you know, a lot of people thought that it was kind of an act. But, you know, that was a genuine Mike Leach. Yeah, Mike Leach is Mike Leach. I've done the 35 minutes on Halloween candy with him before. <laughs> I've walked into the, the quarterback room when he was literally analyzing the best 10 fast food hamburgers in America with his quarterback crew. <laughs> Who was number one? <laughs> well, he, he was a huge fan of In-N-Out, okay. uh, too. which is right. a West Coast. Yeah. You know, but one of the kids brought up, and I'm going to insult somebody by saying this, but I think it was uh, it was the one in Texas. Uh, what a burger. Yeah. And he said, what a burger is the most overrated <laughs> burger in the market. And the kid he was talking to was from Texas, and he wanted to stand up strong for what a burger. But there's these bonding that these kids literally would stand in front of traffic for Mike Leach because he was so genuine. They loved him. Even just watching him walk to practice and seeing the way the team would greet him was, was really a special thing. Yeah. So, Rockstar, can you tell John Cohen real quick your Mike Leach story when he came on the show that one time? Uh, we had called Mike, and I had we had about a minute left in this commercial break, and I called him, and I said, Coach, it's Rockstar. Still able to do a couple minutes with us on the, for an interview? And he said, yeah, yeah, that's fine. And I said, all right, we got about a minute to hold. I'm going to put you, he's like, are you going to put me on hold? And I said, yeah, I'm just going to put you on hold. He's like, I don't want to be put on hold. Just talk to me for that minute. <laughs> <laughs> That's vintage Mike Leach, isn't it? Just talk to it me. really is. Yeah. Yeah. It really, I'll tell you guys a quick story. I, my, my daughter who who's, works at Ole Miss, long story there, I won't go into that. But my daughter, <laughs> well, your family, I know, you guys I are know. not afraid to cross lines. I know, but my, my daughter was in law school at Wake Forest. And I was walking to practice with, with Coach Leach. And I just say, hey, Jordan, I'll call you back. I'm with Coach Leach. Let me call you right back. And he said, is that your kid who's in law school? And I said, yeah. He said, give me the phone. He's like, Jordan, hey, this is Mike Leach. Are you in property? Do you take property right now in law school? And she said, yes, sir, I do. And, and he said, well, and he went into some case, I can't even remember what it was, for like five minutes is talking about a landmark property case <laughs> that he studied when he was in law school at Pepperdine, <laughs> you know, 40 years ago. And and I get the phone back, and Jordan's like, Dad, that guy really knows what he – we just went over that <laughs> property, and he's not looking at any notes or anything else. He, he was an extraordinary man. Yeah. yeah. John Cohen, Auburn Athletic Director. John, thank you very much for the time. Thank you for hosting us down Enjoyed here today. It. We appreciate it. War Eagle.